Cyberpunk 2077 was developed by CD Projekt Red. And I use the word developed very, very loosely because this game right here was released unfinished. And when I say unfinished, I mean like something went horribly wrong behind the scenes with this game. I have no idea what the fuck was going on at CD Projekt Red, but it seems to me that upper management in that company clearly didn't care about risking the reputation of the company itself and also risking the livelihoods of every developer, every person that works for CD Projekt Red uh, along with them. So for me, uh, this this game is, um, I have a more, I, I guess a slightly more positive opinion on this game compared to uh, a lot of the people who played this on console because uh, the console version, which I'm not going to speak talk much about because I didn't play the console version. I played this on PC. You know, that's the reason I do the unboxing videos. It's not the show off or anything. It's to prove that I actually bought the game uh, myself and I, that I do have the game. I do own the game. That's why I do the unboxing videos. And um, I played this on PC. I didn't play the, the console version of Cyberpunk. I have seen the videos uh, of the glitches and the, the hard crashes on PS4. Um, I, and I've also seen the uh, the Xbox footage as well. Um, this game runs like shit on console. And on PC, um, it's buggy as well. It's not as bad with the performance, but the, the glitches and the bugs and the, the game struggling to uh, load in the textures and everything, that's still a thing in the PC version of this game. And it shouldn't be that way because the game was in development since before the, the PS4 and the Xbox One were, were even released. They, they had a good seven, seven years and some change to make this fucking game. And for whatever reason, it seems to me that they didn't, um, they didn't utilize that time properly. And I just don't understand, you know, once again, what happened. There is a, a list of things that, that I wanted to discuss with this game. Uh, primarily starting off with um, the good points, and then I'm going to go into what didn't work uh, in Cyberpunk 2077. Now, to start off, you know, I'm not a fan of CD Projekt Red. I was never really a fan of CD Projekt Red. Uh, they've never developed any game that I've liked. Um, the Witcher games, for example. Um, I don't like any of the Witcher games, um, and I actively despise The Witcher 3. Uh, that's one of the most overrated pieces of shit that's been released last generation and I don't understand the praise for that game other than people like the story and the characters outside of that the gameplay was shit the combat system was shit Geralt in that game controlled like shit and um, it, it wasn't a good game uh, to actually play story wise and characters and all that were great um, but when it came to the gameplay yeah that left a lot to be desired and it's really the same case here for Cyberpunk 2077. The story and the characters are uh, the best parts of the game. Um, actually, all of the characters in this game were actively good. There's proficient writing throughout the game from start to finish. V's story was, was interesting. It was basically, uh, you know, the type of story where everything is at stake. And every, every single move that this character makes is crucial. Uh, because his survival is dependent on him meeting with, with certain people uh, that can help him uh, with his uh, dilemma. It's a very compelling narrative, and it's something that you don't really see too often in video games. The story is something that, uh, that I did like in this game. Another thing that works in Cyberpunk is the, uh, the character design and the, the world design and all that. The design of everything just it, it feels futuristic, but it also feels grounded at the same time. It's not just the fact that the game is set in the future, but it's also the fact that the game retains uh, elements of, of the modern world. It's just uh, placed in a more futuristic environment, you know, so you still have cars and motorcycles in the game, you know, that drive on the ground. But then you also have flying vehicles, you know, flying hover, you know, aircrafts that, uh, you know, flying transport vehicles that don't exist in the in the real world. Um, and so that gives it a. Um, a neo uh, futuristic uh, feel um, but like I said it feels a lot more grounded you know the colorful characters and everything just uh, adds to the overall lore and the backstory of uh, the world itself everything regarding like 
the lore, the characters, the story, you know, the, the overall narrative, the, the back story of the, uh, the, the world and, and the characters and all that, all that was handled, um, you know, beautifully. So that's something that, uh, that I don't have uh, a complaint about. And that's really the only thing that carried me through the game. Now, when it comes to the graphics, um, yeah, like I said, on PC, it's nowhere near as bad as console. Because, um, like I said, I've seen the footage for uh, the console version of this game. And um, the console version is just that it's a complete disaster. The, the PC version does run. Um, it does run smooth. But at times, it does struggle to load in textures. And um, at times, it, it does um, it does stutter. Uh, there are instances here and there where characters will just vanish or disappear or just, you know, simply teleport across the screen and you have no idea how they got there. Like I said, this game was released unfinished. And so, you know, these are some of the things that you encounter. Um, these are some of the things I encountered when I played the game. So, yeah, that's a that's a problem um, when the game is running well and there's no glitches, especially like during the game's in-game cutscenes, which are entirely from a first person perspective. It, it looks great. It, it really does. Not only does it look great, it it, it does look like a modern uh, a modern video game. All the all the glitches and the uh, the technical issues, the bugs and all, and all that, they do drag down the experience and they um, they break immersion um, far more than they should. And as I said, with my retrospective of Spider Man Miles Morales. I don't care if a video game has glitches because you know it is a video game and uh, video games these days are big. They're huge, um, and I think that's that's a problem. I think we need more uh, linear-based experiences. But when we have big games like this, you obviously want a, a perfect, uh, you know, smooth experience. But the reality of game design is that uh, the developers can't fix everything before launch, and so glitches are expected. I ran into glitches with uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales. Um, but I only encountered three glitches and it wasn't like a hard crash or anything. And the game would just like quickly load if something did go wrong and the game just became unplayable. And it only happened three times out of the, the two playthroughs that I, that I went through with uh, Miles Morales. Here, it seems that uh, they just, once again, I have no idea what the fuck was going on behind the scenes, but... They didn't iron out all the uh, the technical issues that uh, that they should have before uh, the game's release, and that's a problem. But um, an even bigger problem with Cyberpunk 2077 and the things that really doesn't work about it is the gameplay. And uh, the gameplay in Cyberpunk 2077 is, within a nutshell, weak. It's very, very weak. Starting off with uh, the gunplay. The, the gunplay is like the main thing, the, the combat. This is a uh, an FPS first person shooter. The problem with uh, the you know the shooting in the game, because um, I'll say that the the guns themselves they feel good to shoot. They look great. Um, they have a great design to them. Like everything looks like it it, it should work properly, but um, it it really doesn't work that way uh, the way it should. Uh, the problem is the aiming. The aiming is just fucked up in this game. Um, it's so bad, actually, that uh, that I had to turn up the sensitivity setting. And I never touched the sensitivity settings for any video game, ever. Like, I've, I've never had to go in the menu and, and, like, you know, turn up the sensitivity because the aiming was just too slow. I didn't even do that with Killzone 2. And Killzone 2 is, like, the game that has uh, the, the lowest light sensitivity out of any FPS I've ever played. Um, but it worked in Killzone 2. It does not work in Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, often, even even after turning up the sensitivity settings, often I, I would have extreme trouble in combat trying to, um, you know, pinpoint my target and uh, land shots on whoever my target was. And I would either overshoot my, uh, my target or undershoot my target. And it just made the game frustrating. Like whenever I was in any, you know, combat situation or scenario, um, the aiming just made the game virtually unplayable. And uh, this goes back to the fact that the game's unfinished and it, it seems that they didn't really iron everything out before release like they should have. And the sensitivity um, and the aiming was also a complaint in GameSpot's review. Uh, Kaylee uh, P., who's one of, like, one of the worst gaming 
journalists in the industry. Um, unfortunately, in this situation, I have to agree with her that, uh, you know, the sensitivity should have been handled a lot better than, uh, than what they, you know, what they actually did uh, with the final version. Another issue is that uh, the enemies in the game are damage sponges. And uh, really the only way to do or to deal significant amount of damage to the AI is to land headshots. And um, I had this issue with uh, Metro Exodus. Metro Exodus also had the same problem. It's where, you know, you have to, to land headshots in order to, to deal um, a significant amount of damage to the enemies that are on screen. Although in Metro Exodus, it wasn't as bad as it is here uh, with Cyberpunk because Metro Exodus is not an RPG um, the same way that Cyberpunk is. It seems to me that they didn't, um, they didn't do a good job of um, allocating the, the damage that the player dishes out uh, properly. And they do have like a management, an item management system in the game, um, similar to other RPGs like the, the recent Assassin's Creed games and all that where you earn different, uh, you can pick up any weapon from any enemy that you kill in the game, and then you can uh, dismantle the, the weapons that you pick up for uh, various resources because there's a crafting system in the game, although I never had to use the crafting system, um, which just makes that entire mechanic useless. You know, the crafting system is useless because you can pick up any weapon that uh, any enemy drops, so there's really no point in uh, utilizing the crafting system. It's just something that was just a waste of development time and resources. Um, and then you have like different uh, stats or different um, different categories of weapons. Like you have common weapons, you have epic weapons, you have rare weapons. I think you have um, legendary weapons or whatever it's called. And then they're all color coded. Like you have gray, green, blue, purple, and orange. It's something that isn't new. And we've seen this in other video games. Like I said, I just mentioned the, the recent Assassin's Creed games that have done this. I would have preferred it if they just, if they had it like a Final Fantasy game where you, you just purchase the weapons. And so, you know, the weapons actually feel meaningful instead of just picking up, you know, random loot, basically. Like I said, I don't like looting in video games because then it, it starts to feel like a game, a games as a service title. And this is a single player game. It's not a multiplayer game. Yeah, I didn't care for uh, the inventory management system. I didn't care for the way you, you uh, earn weapons in the game, which is essentially just another uh, lazy form of, of looting. Um, I didn't care for the fact that, uh, you know, the crafting system, I didn't like the crafting system. Uh, the crafting system was just useless. The damage sponge enemies uh, just just made it practically unbearable. I also don't like the fact that uh, as far as like the enemies go, the AI is just fucking retarded in this game. They tried to incorporate like some stealth elements with the AI, but there's really no point in uh, in engaging with the stealth because one, it's it's too easy to get caught. For two, that the AI is just dumb. And they're really not proficient in combat at all. A lot of the time, enemies will just stay in one place. Like, they'll just stand in one spot and just let you just basically fire on them until they're dead. And I even encountered this issue with one of the boss fights late in the game. And that's uh, that's a big problem. Um, because it basically trivializes the, uh, the difficulty. And speaking of the difficulty, you know, I did demo uh the game i did try the game out on the, the two higher difficulty settings because i mainly played this game on normal because the enemies are damaged sponges and because of how terrible the aiming is the game is just unplayable on uh on the higher difficulty levels it's it just it's just a frustrating uh masochistic mess and uh, i wasn't about to, to sit there and, and waste my time dying over and over again uh fighting with the game you know the the combat system to do what I wanted it to do just so I can play on this uh, shitty, poorly designed difficulty level when the combat system itself isn't even designed properly. Another thing that doesn't work about Cyberpunk 2077, aside from its combat and its, uh, its weak inventory system and its just useless crafting system, is the driving. Now, I mentioned this with uh, Watch Dogs Legion. Like, Watch Dogs Legion had some of the worst, not some of the worst, it had the worst fucking driving I've ever seen in an open world game. And honestly, Cyberpunk 2077 is pretty much right up there with it. Uh, the driving just does not work in this game, especially if you're playing from a first person perspective, because 
the driving is the only uh, gameplay mechanic in the game where you can freely switch between third person and first person. In third person, it's it's a little bit more bearable um, because you have a, a greater view of your surroundings. But if you play the Far Cry games, it's like it's no excuse. Even Ubisoft with uh, the Far Cry games, you know, those being, you know, another open world first person perspective type game. The driving in the Far Cry games just works. You know, it, it doesn't the vehicles stop when you want them to stop. Uh, there's not too much, you know, sliding around with them. Um, they all have the appropriate amount of weight uh, for each different uh, vehicle that, that you uh, drive in, you know, in those games. The driving is just handled well in Far Cry. You know, with all the issues that the Far Cry games have, the driving is not one of them. Cyberpunk 2077 with the driving is just awful. Um, the cars, like I said, will just basically slide all over the place. It's extremely difficult to turn around the corner and uh, end up in, in the appropriate lane that you want to go in uh, without running into anything. It, it's a complete mess. And if you're weak in the stomach, you know, the game can make you nauseous. Um, it can give you a headache uh, because of how terrible, you know, the, the driving actually is. It was just, like I said, it's it's something else that was unfinished uh, with, with the development. And uh, that that's a damn shame. The only thing uh, with the driving that I enjoyed was the motorcycle. But even that had its issues. Uh, the motorcycles just felt easier to control. But like I said, it, it just it wasn't perfect either. And so the driving, unfortunately, was a big problem. So much of a problem to to the point where I utilized the uh, the fast travel system rather than actually like traveling through the city. I, I chose to utilize the, the fast travel mechanic. And when an open world game fails at exploration and, you know, it doesn't encourage the player to actually free roam instead of just utilizing the fast travel system, you know, whenever possible. If it's not actually fun to traverse the open world, then that's how you know the game fails as, as an open world game. You know, the open world should be fun to explore. Games that, that do a great job of this be like uh, the later Batman Arkham games. The, uh, the Spider-Man games by Insomniac, Horizon Zero Dawn, you know, that, that was a, a fun open world to explore. I just, with, with this one, it's not just the fact that the, the driving mechanics and shit are just weak. It's also the fact that the world just feels dead. And this is one of the common criticisms that people have uh, with this game, is that it's an open world, but the open world is pretty much lifeless. You have NPCs that walk around, but you can't really interact with them um, at, at all on any uh, deep, profound level. There's nothing interesting that ever happens in the city. There's really nothing to do um, outside of the main missions and the side missions. There's nothing to uh, actually see or collect or just experience. The open world just feels like... A backdrop. It, it doesn't feel like an actual living, breathing, immersive um, space, which is a, a huge problem. And it, it goes back to uh, what was the the issue with this game, as far as the uh, the advertising goes. And I'm going to talk about that. But the main issue um, with Cyberpunk 2077 is that the the open world and the combat system and the way you interact with NPCs with which is virtually non-existent with the way certain things are developed in the game or lack thereof. There's really no point in playing this game after you beat the, the main, the, you know, the main story. Like the main story is good enough to, to get to carry you through the experience. But once it's done, there's really no reason to, to go back through and, and uh, continue playing, even with the, the characters being as well written as they are, simply because the gameplay just simply is not fun at all. The driving sucks. The combat is shit because of the way it controls um, and the you know how overpowered some of the uh, the enemies are. Even the leveling system, the uh, skill trees. You have all these different skill trees in the game, but most of the uh, the skills or whatever that you can unlock, they're they're too expensive, and it it's simply uh, not possible for you to just uh, level quickly in this game and earn you know certain skills to to really pinpoint what kind of experience you want to have with the game um, as far as the combat goes. And it just seems pointless to have all these skill trees when 
you know, here and there, the game will only give you like one or two skill points to unlock a skill. And then they have multiple attributes um, like you can level up a skill multiple times, um, which we also saw in some of the recent Assassin's Creed games like um, Odyssey, for example. Um, that, that was a thing in uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. But um, as an RPG, that's uh, that's a far more effective RPG compared to uh, Cyberpunk in, in its current state. And uh, that's a goddamn shame. So when you add everything together and you, you see um, exactly what was delivered versus what was advertised, which is the big thing here, it's insanely disappointing with this game. Like... When you read comments on the internet of people saying, you know, this is going to be game of the year, this is going to be the best game this year, it's because they have a certain level of expectation. You know, CD Projekt Red built a, a very good reputation with The Witcher 3. Again, I don't know how because The Witcher 3 was really wasn't a good game either, but a lot of people do love that game. And, uh, you know, coming off of uh, The Witcher 3 and the Cyberpunk, they had a lot of goodwill. That was built up because of the success of The Witcher 3. And uh, the previews for this game made it seem like it was going to be this big, um, expansive RPG where you had, you know, this unlimited amount of choice, you know, player choice. And you could form the, the story the way you wanted. You know, it was going to be like this next uh, Grand Theft Auto uh, type, you know, Red Dead Redemption 2 open world style game where you can go around and just do anything you wanted it was going to have the like the depth of uh like mass effect or something like that it's not even fucking close to being what was advertised at all uh this is a tightly scripted game with a very piss poor boring open world with a bad combat system with uh terrible exploration because the driving sucks in the game with very very little player choice like, player choice in this game is basically irrelevant. Different dialogue options and all that, they really don't um, change the story in any radical way, like people were expecting, like how I was expecting. Again, this is just another case of false advertisement, plain and simple. Uh, CD Projekt Red, they basically pulled another No Man's Sky. They basically pulled another Final Fantasy XV, where they showed previews of what you know, of a game that people wanted to play, but what they actually delivered was far below what the expectations were. And yeah, it can be said that it, the, you know, the, the final product is not bad. It's not terrible. And the game is decent in, in, a, in, you know, certain areas. But at the end of the day, decent is not good enough. I'm tired of it's just good or it's just okay. And I've seen comments online of people saying, well, yeah, um, I still think the game's great, and if you're one of those fucking people, you, your fucking taste is shit, okay? There, there's no defending this bullshit right here. Uh, this is a very weak effort from what's considered to be one of the, the best developers in the industry, plain and simple. Cyberpunk 2077, it's mediocre, dude. It's it's not, it's not good. Um, is it the worst thing I've played this year? No, far from it. Um, I wouldn't even say it's the top three, you know, in, in my top three for, uh, you know, the worst games that I've played this year. But it's extremely disappointing um, what was delivered here. Outside of the story and the characters, it's really not good at, at all. It's it's not good on a gameplay level whatsoever. As far as the quality of life features that were uh, promised for this, the vast majority of them didn't make it into the game. Like, they they promised all these different things uh, that that were going to make it into uh, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven, such as wall running. Wall running was was removed. I think last year um, they they removed that mechanic, and you know there are certain things like that um, that you can look up that they promised that was going to be in this game, and it's just it's just weak, man. Um, it, plain and simple. And yeah, if you play on PC, I mean the game's more bearable, but like I said, it's it's um this is a very weak effort from uh, CD Projekt Red, and then I've been reading uh, reports of the fact that their their stock has dropped, not dropped by by a, a low margin either. Like their stock dropped, I think over thirty points, uh, because of the the false advertisement bullshit. Uh, Sony recently pulled this game from the PlayStation Store, and that just 
tells you how how much of a failure this fucking game is. Even pieces of shit like No Man's Sky, I don't believe, was like pulled from the PlayStation Store when when that mess came out. It's it's, it's very sad, man. What uh what happened with this game? There is some very very bad management at, at CD Projekt Red, similar to uh, Naughty Dog, and they need to purge whoever is at the head of this uh, development studio. Whoever the the upper level management is, they need to lose their jobs. Like no people need to be fired. I'm tired of mediocrity. I I, re- I really am tired of mediocrity uh, with with the video game industry, and it's it's just. This is another case of, you know, let's release it now, fix it later. You know, the game was in development for a lot longer than most other video games. Um, I think this was like a seven year development cycle. And that's uh, far longer than than common AAA video games. The game was delayed multiple times. This originally was supposed to come out in April. And had it came out in April, I can only imagine how much worse it would have been. The game probably was unplayable back in April, even on PC. You know, there are certain people that are that are saying, you know, let's just wait for them to fix it. You know, they have a chance to, to fix it and redeem themselves. Look, man, it, it's like this. First impressions are everything. Like if someone spits in my face the first time, I'm not going to give you, you know, a second chance. Like I said, there are other games that are coming out next year. I'm not going to wait several months up to a year later to potentially see if this game is going to get better. Because... Even though most of what's wrong with it is gameplay related and they can fix it, it it's too late, dude. It's too late. Most of the players uh, who've purchased the game have already gotten full refunds for this, um, especially if you know they bought it digitally or if they you know if they bought it physically, you probably already send it back to whatever retailer you purchased the game from. And uh, that's what's recommended in this situation to me. This is something that can't be ignored. And even gaming journalists, some of the some of the biggest shills in the industry, motherfuckers at IGN have been telling people this is unacceptable. You know, the way this game was released, especially on console, but realistically on all platforms. Um, The game is just a buggy mess. Gameplay wise, it's it's really not that great either. All you have to do is read some of the user reviews on Metacritic and people will fucking tell you this is it's weak. It's one it's one of the biggest disappointments this year. And um, like I said, I'm tired of this kind of bullshit with uh, with gaming. And uh, I'll make a video um, shortly talking about that. But for now, Cyberpunk 2077, like I said, everything with the world design, the music too, like the game has one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard uh, for for gaming, the world design, the characters, the the music, the, the story and, and the lore and all that, all that stuff is fantastic. But the gameplay is just shit. The game runs very poorly. It's just a weak effort from CD Projekt Red, who basically lied during the the game's marketing and delivered a product that's not what was expected or even promised. And uh, as a result, you know, at this point, I I really don't have any interest in anything else that uh, CD Projekt Red does, especially considering the fact that I'm, I'm not a fan of them in the first place. So... I really expected uh, a lot more from this game. Millions of people did. We're all in the same boat. This uh, this game is just, it's mediocre. And I don't blame anyone for, you know, getting refunds or saying this is bad because, like I said, it's, it's just, it's bullshit, you know, what happened with this game. That's Cyberpunk 2077. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is.